Now, as you probably know, in the 1960s, the government, um, concerned with the impact of increasing traffic on towns, commissioned the late uh, Colin Buchanan, Sir Colin Buchanan and his team, to, um, d d d to uh, recommend what should be done about this in, in towns. And his report, Traffic in Towns, of 1963, uh, often referred to as the Buchanan Report, an immensely uh, articulate, well-argued, and very influential government document, uh, from which his central conclusion was that these two functions I've described, that of uh, movement, traffic on the one hand, and civic functions of interaction, were, in his words, fundamentally incompatible. And it was the job, therefore, of architects and engineers and planners to segregate, in his words, uh, uh, cities into movement and, and social space. So that we have, for example, for the first time, the pedestrian precinct emerge as a way of having traffic-free uh, space. Another mod a new idea at the time, other models, this is a sketch for um, um, Tottenham Court Road, of vertically segregating the two twin functions. So you had all the movement and traffic and buses on one level and all the exchange and shopping, whatever, on, on another. Not a very successful model, but one that you can see traces of in most major cities around the world. It was a principle enthusiastically endorsed by government at the time. This was the first sentence of <coughs> roads and urban areas by the then um, uh, Minister for Transport. And um, it, it kind of, it, 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 it's, it's, stem well with the, with the um, principle in planning at the time that we should order and rationally order, the government should decide where we live and where we work and where we play and keep that separate. Children maybe should be more imaginative in finding places to play. Um, I'm just, just old enough to remember this leaflet being sent by the government to every school in the country, um, redefining the notion of what uh, children's boundaries uh, were and, and making sure that uh, parents and teachers and so on understood that. And perhaps more famously, the hugely expensive uh, Ministry of Transport, as it was then, poster, One False Move, which uh, appeared in 1982 and was one of the most um, expensive and, and indeed successful child pedestrian um, uh, campaigns. Um, I was intrigued. This is the poster that got me interested in this subject because I thought, well, how interesting. What a severe punishment for making a mistake. Kind of tough if you're blind or elderly or confused or drunk or small child and so on, but um, um, nevertheless, of course, what it does is to hugely emphasize the uh, curb as a, as a boundary between two quite different worlds, and the penalty for transgression between those two is very severe indeed. Um, incidentally, uh, this poster did result in a huge drop in child pedestrians, uh, child accidents, because it dropped a huge drop in child pedestrians. Almost every parent in the country took the decision over the, over the following years to drive their children to school and, and around, not to let them walk. Um, the, the fact that they died of obesity further down the line is, is someone else's problem. But, of course, it gives us a, an essentially a public realm which is segregated, that the uh, public realm en ends at the curb there, maybe with a, with a fence. Uh, the space in the middle is managed by somebody else, usually a county council as opposed to a district council, uh, with different rules and different beliefs. The people who look after the bit in the middle have striped polyester ties and, and, uh, and, and, um, and so forth, you know the type, and the people on the right-hand side have roll neck cashmere pullovers and th you, know, you know the sort of stuff. But they have different in educational backgrounds, different institutions and, and so forth. And if you're lucky, you can uh, press a button to apply for permission to cross the space in the middle, but otherwise they are seen as segregated spaces. Now, in the past um, uh, uh, 15, 20 years, some challenges to this notion have begun to emerge. The, Dear Prince of Wales, with his influence on uh, Poundbury in, Dorset, Dor in, in Dorchester, began to, whatever the Mickey Mouse architecture, posit a notion for streets, which is very different, where to everyone's surprise and the terror of the local um, uh, safety engineers, he proposed no uh, wide sweeping sight lines, no signs, no markings, and uh, to everyone's amazement, the last 20 years have seen very little blood on the streets of Dorchester. Um, in the past uh, five years, CABE, the Commission for Architecture and Built Environment, have been studying streets very closely to see what, what is it that makes the most successful street renovation projects in different sort of contexts, and, and their work has been very useful in this field. But one theme emerges very strongly from all of their studies, and that is a changing attitude to risk and to safety, and the, input, and the relationship between hazards and, um, and, and, uh, and safety. And if you haven't ever come across him or read his work, Professor John Adams uh, of the Press of Geography at UCL, I do recommend his book. If you ever want your brain taking out of its skull, washing in clear, clear cold water, spinning around a few times and putting back, 
read chapter seven of Risk on seatbelts. Adams is very good on seatbelts. But um, his, his, from the 60s or 70s, he's been writing about the concept of risk compensation effect, the fact that humans are remarkably complex and that road safety, in his words, is not rocket science. It's much, much more complicated than that. And um, uh, he has been, uh, his, his influence, you can see in government publications, the value of risk in designing public spaces is an interesting title. Uh, Adams's work is very, he, he, he looked, for example, if, um, at uh, events like in 1967, uh, some of you older uh, members may, may recall, Sweden took the decision to change its road driving side from the, from the left to the right, poor benighted Swedes. But they decided to do this in the teeth of huge public concern about the number of additional people who would be killed or injured on the road as a result of the chaos of moving from the left to the right. And against stiff opposition, they decided to go ahead with it in 1st of September 1967, having imported additional hospital, temporary hospitals and doctors and nurses from Denmark and Norway and so forth. Now, in the event, and it changed over, 1st of September, no country in the developed world has ever had a safer three-month period on the roads than did Sweden. <laughs> One third of the normal average people were injured or killed uh, until uh, Swedish drivers got used to it and went back to their normal ways of killing an acceptable number of people. In other words, there's something very complex and interesting about people's response to circumstances. If you're serious about road safety, the government should change the road driving side from the left to the right every three months. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, of course, we're not that serious about road safety. <laughs> Another just, just example of Adam, Adam's work, which um, I, I like very much, is that in, in Jerusalem there's an area called the Bani Barak. And the Bani Barak is a very well-defined neighborhood, um, quite dense neighborhood, um, predominantly occupied by Hasiatic Jews of uh, Eastern European extraction, very, very ultra, ultra-Orthodox. And <clears throat> for whatever reason, they are terrible pedestrians. They never look left or right, they never use pedestrian crossings, they never hold their children's hands, they never stop at the curb. And, um, and a lot of re uh, social researchers have been observing them to understand why. But um, Adams was not interested in why. What he was interested in was that the next door neighborhood, which is the same density and has the same volume of traffic, is predominantly occupied by secular Jews, mainly of Central European and German extraction, who, as I'm sure you're aware, are culturally very obedient. And uh, uh, Germans will patiently wait at three o'clock in the morning for the green light to show before they cross the road. Which of those two areas have the highest road casualty statistics? Well, it's interesting because, you know, of course, the, 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 the secular area suffers more. In other words, drivers aren't stupid. And this observation that people are not stupid, they will learn very fast and adapt to their surroundings, has important implications for the way government intervenes in the thought processes of drivers. Um, that if we try and do people's thinking for them, we don't necessarily um, uh, give ourselves safe environments. I constantly amazed by this. I love road signs, but uh, I was getting off at Birmingham New Street the other day, and I guess you should be aware of pedestrians. They're very fierce in Birmingham. They're, they're a tough lot, those brummies. But it's a kind of weird sign, isn't it? Surely it's the cars you'd be aware of, not the pedestrians, isn't it? And advisory speed limit of 10? Oh, that's kind of obvious, isn't it? I mean, in my hometown, Bristol, the, the, the local authorities spent a lot of money putting up these strange, mysterious, unpunctuated signs. I have no idea what they mean. They sound like a curse from a spaghetti western in the 1950s. You know, not classic. <laughs> but no one takes a blind of the notice, of course, because uh, if there's nothing coming, you walk across the road. It, we've known for a long time that signs are a lousy way to influence behavior. <laughs> it's not, not a good way to, to communicate. We also know from studying, I'm, I'm intrigued by places like car parks and campsites and places that are unregulated, that, um, that if you take away all that regulatory framework, it isn't that people are suddenly thrown into mortal danger and there's no speed limit at all on this campsite that I take my family to every summer. On the contrary, there's an extremely strong social protocol about driving behavior, which is much, much stronger a, a definer of behavior than is regulatory framework. I'm not a a religious person, I'm not a church goer, but I adore old churches, and every town I visit, I always visit churches. And I'm always intrigued to find that I've never yet in my life ever seen anybody light a cigarette in a church, ever. Despite until recently, only recently did the government foolishly put on no smoking signs on churches, stupid thing to do. But this understanding of behavior and risk and the importance of risk is a central theme in, 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 in my work and, and work in streets. It doesn't just apply to streets. I don't want to depress you too much, but this is a playground in Castlehaven. It just had a safety audit carried out on it. 
you'll see there's no there's rubberized matting put in, there's barriers put in, there's, there's no swings. In fact, the no, no <laughs> The reason when asked, we, uh, well, if we put in swings, people, might, children might climb on and play on them and might hurt themselves. Well, of course, the whole reason that children are programmed, are evolved to play is to test their risk boundaries. That's what they're doing when they play. And by definition, that means accidents. You can't do... The, and that um, we are, we think, extremely important to allow children to have accidents. But the notion of, of, um, of misunderstanding the ability of people to read and understand space results in an awful lot of public money, I would suggest, being wasted. This is a pretty dismal, I, I, I won't depress you too much, but this is Basingstoke. If you do get tired of life, go and live in Basingstoke. But, but this is a new housing estate, that, a cul-de-sac. <sighs> been crossed by a, a, a rather quiet bicycling and, and pedestrian route. And you can see just amazing amounts of, of money, of different materials are just extraordinary. To, to just treat people like, I mean, do we really expect bicyclists? I don't know what they're supposed to do at that point. But <laughs> anyway, so the, the, the notion of treating that the local authorities treating people as idiots is, is not necessarily very a very good idea. From Adams, the other end, it was a much more, Adams is more of a theoretician, um, the late Hans Mondermann, the, who was head of road safety for the province of Netherlands in, in for 30 years, until his untimely death uh, three years ago, began to discover some remarkable things, merely through experimentation. And against the, 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 the convention of all of his colleagues, he found if he had a safety problem in a town or a village, he would always try and take something out, not put something in. And he found uh, in his early work, um, this is a little town called Machinga, uh, where it's, I think, the first town to remove every trace of road markings, road signs, road si traffic signals, the lot. And he discovered that, it, firstly, it made no difference to the ability of cars to move through that space. They move rather more freely. And it, interestingly, improved the safety uh, statistics rather rapidly. In its place, he was very clear to try and make the, the village legible, and that the relationship between school and park and church and the historical development of that town is, is developed. And, and, and I went to see him when he took me to this um, intersection in the market town of Usterwalde. And uh, it was rather busier than it is in this picture, but it's, this is formerly a traffic signal junction where he's created this rather stage-like square. And we looked at this, and he's a very, he was a very sober-looking civil servant, head of a big department, um, three-piece suit, and so on. And I was amazed to hear him say, have you ever seen so many traffic violations in one place? It's wonderful. <laughs> Only that way is it safe. There's no guard here. You're not on your own. And his, his redesign allows people to stand, often stand around and have conversations. And it doesn't seem to make any difference to the ability of the junction to perform its function of moving traffic. I want to show you just one other example of, of his work, or maybe, maybe, maybe if I've got time too. Um, this is a school in uh, a primary school, a common problem of the, of the playground of the primary school being in front of the school and far traffic going too fast past the front of the school. The normal response is to build a bigger wall or fence between the primary school and the, and the street and to get the children in some other way. Hans and his team did exactly the opposite. They extended the playground across the street so you drive into the village through the primary school playground. You can imagine this is quite difficult to persuade the education authority and parents, but he <laughs> succeeded. And it's been in operation four years, and as far as I know, no one's been killed yet. But his argument was that children, first of all, aren't stupid. They, they, they can quickly adapt to understanding this. And of course, they're going to have to learn to grow up with traffic all through their lives, and they're much better to expose themselves to this in the relatively controlled environment of a school playground than in normal life. So every aspect of that school extends itself across the street. There are no signs, no, no, no warning signs. The drivers simply, you can see them driving as if their lives depended on it at about 10 miles an hour. And other busier junctions that Hans Mondermann um, worked on included um, uh, the removal of traffic signals from a number of really busy intersections. I don't know whether this uh, brief um, movie clip might just give you a feel for um, the, this is now eight years in operation. This is an extremely busy junction, uh, 17,000 vehicles a day. Um, signals removed and uh, a, a much, much better safety record than the previously controlled traffic signaled uh, environment. Of course, um, it's, uh, it's based on, on, on trust, of course. You, you, you assume that people can understand and move around. 